Yes, Polly does want a cracker. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the recent review. Today we're going to be looking over set number 71308, Tahu, Uniter of Fire. The set contains approximately 132 pieces, was released in the winter of 2016, and at time of release, retailed for $20. We'll also be taking a look at set number 71303, Occur, Creature of Fire. The set contains approximately 77 pieces, was released in the winter of 2016, and retailed for $10. Let's start off with the disclaimer. Just because a pro and or a con is in this video does not necessarily mean it is my opinion. My goal is to provide you with objective points of view brought from the community and or objective facts about the sets that I am able to represent here. However, at the very end, I will provide you with our TTV personal recommendation as to whether or not you should buy a set, uh, wait a little bit, or do not buy it at all. Thank you, and let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with Tahu, Uniter of Fire. Now, Tahu is a big set. He's $20, obviously, enough. Uh, compared to his old counterpart, some things actually have changed. For one, he's gotten taller, and he's a lot sleeker. Another noticeable difference is that he has gotten rid of a lot of his matter red, and replaced it primarily with gold and transparent orange. Some aspects of Tahu have come over. His shoulders having that sweeping look over his arms, he does have some of the similar lower arm designs, and he does have some matter red still. One of the major differences about him, however, has been the armor placement and how sleek he overall is. He does have a lot of new pieces, specifically three pieces of unification, two used on his legs, the new crystal piece, of which two are on his arms, the new sword pieces, which are metal melding somewhat improperly into orange, the new eye stock, the new masks, of which he has two of, one that is red melded in the silver, and the other that is gold melded into transparent orange, and the new torso piece. He also has quite a few recolors, specifically the solid matte red armor shells on his legs, and the armor add-on pieces on his shoulders, new in gold. So finally, some other new pieces include the torso pieces, in the torso build. The torso build is, again, as with most of the Toa, unique to him. It is quite interesting as well. The new pieces on the build consist of the pelvic piece in gunmetal and the beam piece in black with the gear at the bottom. Of course, all this is held together by the piece of unification. Tahu also has quite a few new functions. Moved from his upper back to his lower waist, he has his gear function. If you turn the gear, you can turn the set from left to right. Now, due to the high friction on this feature, there is a possibility that it would make a lot of noise, a audible squeaking sound. There are, as far as I can tell, two ways to fix it. One is if you can take the two pieces apart and put them back together again. And the other is before you put them together, swab them with a Q-tip. However, both of these will result in lesser friction. Because of that, a looser function. So you're really trying to, it's a catch-22. You'll have a trade-off. One of the notable aspects of Tahu are on his feet. An accent color new to him is Dark Azure. He has, he has two Dark Azure Borak eyes connected to his feet. And the printing on his torso, which, by the way, many believe is fantastic, also has the Dark Azure. Speaking of his torso, returning once again since 2002 are the Nuva symbols. And that is evident on Tahu, as he has three of them, as well as one on his mask. So aside from the function on his hip, he also has two additional functions. One being the mask function, obviously, as well as his two fire swords. They have a gear on either side of them. And if you turn the gear, the lower half of the sword will shoot out. The function actually works quite well, and it is a lot of fun to play with. The swords also have the option of kind of connecting into one longer staff, However, the connection is awkward because of how the hands are going to be situated, and it is not advertised almost anywhere. At least, not at the time of the recording of this video. On his back, he actually, due to his construction, has two Borak eyes that can move up or down. So depending on whether or not you want him to look a little sleeker, or you want him to look a little bulkier, they can be moved up or down. However, they are not fixed, and they do not evenly do that, so you have to monitor them if you want a symmetric set. As far as Tahu's articulation is concerned, he has all the standard points. 
one in the head, three in the arms, three in the legs, and currently now, new to these sets, one in the waist. Tahu is certainly a big set, and a lot of people actually really like him because of his stature and comparing him to his prior form. What some people do not like about him would be his legs and the aesthetic that he currently has. Tahu uses the CCBS build. However, that's a very sleek look, obviously enough. And Tahu, he juggles between a bunch of different aesthetics. The torso, which, while people really like the print because of its design and the coloration, they don't like the aesthetic. It's very greebly and pistony, and while some may like that because it harkens back to old Bionicle, others may not because it's a clash of aesthetics. As well as the legs. He has very long legs, and the new piece of unification does not do the greatest job of covering up said legs. They're also dark gray, as opposed to the black in his lower arms or a translucent color. Finally, on his lower legs, we see the new crystal piece, which is yet again another aesthetic. Obviously enough, we know at this time it's meant to show element. It's meant to show powers being used. However, that is a story reason, not a set reason. And as such, they do slightly conflict. That generally sums up Tahu. Let's go ahead and look at his buddy Akur. Now Akur is actually quite a small set. However, that doesn't mean he doesn't have a lot of pieces or that he is any less than any of the other creatures. Many regard him to be one of the better ones. His function, he's obviously supposed to be a phoenix or some sort of a bird. And his function is you take the tail, you bring it up, you push it down, and the wings will flap backwards and forwards. Now, unlike Uxar, who has a very similar function, a cur's wings are attached to ball socket joints. So, even if they are back, you can still have the wings forward, and then push them down, and they'll be forward, and the flapping function actually works rather well. And because there's a higher amount of friction, as well as the ability to move the wings back independent of the gear function, it doesn't really matter where they are, they won't droop down as much, although they will if you shake him regardless. However, you have a lot more flexibility and freedom. Another one of Akur's functions would be on the back of his feet, where he has these kind of back claw things that move up, and they can be flush with the feet, or they can move up and back, and they can do a whole lot of things. There are really two points of articulation, and it's very interesting to see. We also have the claws on his feet, and that's good. The piece of unification, which is a new piece. We do have the two blade pieces, similar to Tahu. We do have these back system pieces, however they are not new. And finally, we do have the new head piece. And now this, a lot of people kind of like it, because it's a big piece, it's very interesting, it's very intricate, it's got a lot of... of of runes on it, however others don't because it's very hollow. Now, Akur does have some interesting points of articulation, two in the head, two in the legs, and technically two in the arms, I'm not sure. He, the fire pieces on his lower wings can actually be moved up and down, so even then you have an extra point of articulation to kind of make him look like there's fire trailing off of his wings or what have you. His color scheme is actually rather consistent being comprised mostly of dark gray, black, transparent orange, and gold. However, some do not like the inclusion of the dark gray, and the light gray, and the silver. So, they, many people feel that it clashes with the gold or the transparent orange, too many metallic colors. People also do not like the open ball joints, because it gives the set a slightly unfinished look. All in all, a lot of people do like Kerr. He's a small, quaint set, and his function actually works really well, and it helps that he is the most advertised of the creatures. With Kerr comes the Shadow Trap. Now, obviously, I won't talk too much about it. There's not much to talk about. It opens, it closes, and it has it's, it's kind of modified from the others. It has these four transparent orange legs and one blue eye, and it's the only one that have a blue eye thus far. What you can do with it is it will kind of wrap around a creature head, and it will kind of wrap around a Toa's foot, but that's really the most you're going to get out of it. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at what these two look like combined. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is take Tahu's normal mask and replace it with his golden mask, and the function works really, really well, thanks to the shorter eye stock. However, unfortunately, due to the shorter eye stock, it has poor light piping. So go ahead and put the golden mask on Tahu, and that actually looks really great because his normal standard red mask actually kind of looks like a darker shade, similar to Hein's catch-up as opposed to the bright red on his legs. So you've got the mask on him. Go ahead and take a cur, 
and splay his arms and his legs out. Now, line up the two pinholes with the pin and the axle. Go ahead and connect the two. It'll actually work together, and they'll snap together quite well, so you won't need to worry too much about that. Go ahead and then gently place Akur's head over Tahu's, which will actually work quite seamlessly, and you're effectively done. You can do whatever you will with the arms and the legs, but here you go. It's Phoenix Tahu. And my goodness, this just looks impressive. It just gives him such an amazing stature. The connection is solid. The legs, they can kind of fold up and do their own thing. There's not a whole lot that they're doing to get in the way. Maybe of the gear function, but that is that. The function still works on the arms. It just looks imposing. The color scheme looks fantastic. It gives Tahu an amazing, fiery, elemental look. Some people do not like it because of the extra silver, obviously on the wings. He's a little bit more back heavy now. There's a gap because of the creature head connecting to the mask, and the creature head does not snap to anything. It just kind of lies there on the head. However, a lot of people love this, and it is the poster unification of this wave. It really does a lot to beef Tahu up. So, with all that out of the way, it's time for our TTV personal recommendation. As far as Tahu is concerned, TTV highly recommends him. Everyone really loves this set, despite our earlier feelings about it because of preliminary or what-have-you photos. The aesthetic is still an issue, obviously enough, and he does have a lot of awkward proportions with the arms and the legs, and some color choices seem a bit questionable. And you may not like Tahu now as compared to his prior form because he is missing a lot of Mata Red. However, we do highly recommend him for the $20 price tag he is at. As far as Akur goes, we also highly recommend Akur. He's a phenomenal creature, and despite his small stature and somewhat limited articulation, he's got a very great function, he does come with the cool little shadow trap trinket, and he overall just works phenomenally with Tahu, and that is the most important feature here. So that has been our review. What do you guys think of these two? Do you have them? Do you like them? Let us know either in the comments below or on the TTV message boards at board.ttvpodcast.com. I'm LJ, and thanks for watching.